Okay, good evening. Thanks for joining us. Uh, this webinar is titled uh, Get Wrapping, and it's going to be we're going to be talking through the top 10 tips for getting into vehicle wrapping. Uh, my name is Joe. I look after the academy here at Roland DG, and I'm joined by James. Do you want to give us a quick introduction? Yeah, as I said, my name is James Deacon, company Bigger Stickers, as you can see. Um, I started uh, over 20 years ago in a traditional sign shop. Um, quite quickly got into vehicle wrapping, vehicle branding. That's is back in the day when people were still painting, lettering onto vehicles, but quite quickly progressed in graphic design and digital printing with the help of Roland. Um, I've been offering training services with Roland for over 10 years now. I think we've been running courses here. Um, I'm constantly learning, still learning to this day. That's why I love vehicle wrapping. It's constantly evolving. I am actually freelance. I share premises. I'm based near Bista. Um, in Buckinghamshire, and I travel around the country as much as I can, um, fitting wraps on a freelance basis, as well as offering a design and a print service as well. There we go. So uh, James has joined us today because he's the he's the whiz, he's the man who knows everything about wrapping compared to myself. So I'm just going to ask the questions. Um, but as I said, we've got a top ten tips basically. So we've sort of come up with um, ten things, uh, sort of key aspects that you want to look out for when you're getting into vehicle wrapping. Um, so we'll talk through those. As I said, ask, your, ask any questions away in the chat box. and We'll try and answer them as, as we get towards the end of the session. So top one, you know, number one, maybe not top. They're not sort of top to bottom list. But uh, number one in our list of things to, <clears throat> uh, to look out for are making sure that you've got the right facility or space in order to introduce wrapping into your business. Yeah, because a lot of people may not have premises or just be thinking of starting a wrap business. Again, we're gonna expand on all these points as we go through the courses. If you have a particular interest and what, want us to expand on a particular point, then again, ask a question as we go. Um, regards facility, um, again, it should be a dedicated area. A lot of people say to me, can I wrap outside? I would not advise it, especially in the UK. We haven't got an all year round climate. Um, we're very worried about contamination of the film. So my main points to mention, typically I will say to people, it needs to be clean, dry, warm, and very well lit environment. Um, space is also an issue. Um, I would like to be able to park a vehicle, open all the doors on the vehicle, and still be able to access, get access around the vehicle. Again, it will depend. If you're just interested in wrapping cars, you don't need 5,000 square feet, obviously. Yeah. Um, if you're working with more trade vehicles, height is a consideration. Um, people often want to use a huge warehouse, and obviously all your heat's going to go up to the ceiling. So some people may modify workshops, create stud walls, make a smaller environment. As the way the planet's going, I'd like people to spend a lot of money on insulation. So any heat we do have in the unit, um, we try and keep in the space. Um, Type of heat's very important. I really don't like moving air, we call it. So I don't like gas blowers, fan heaters. I'm gonna try and use maybe even a mixture of heat. Um, I'm now heating our workshop with radiators because we luckily we're on mains gas. Some people in rural areas won't have that luxury. Um, so we're having radiators, but then I'm also locally on the vehicle, I may use infrared as well. I don't wanna to go too much into that because it does cook you from the inside and I haven't done long-term research into the effects of using that type of equipment. Um, lighting's super important. I'm trying to look after my eyes, especially as uh, I've been doing something for 20 years. Uh, you gotta look after yourself. So daylight bulbs, LED to save energy, really. Also low level lighting. If I've got lots of lights on a ceiling, I can't see the inside of my wheel arch. So uh, a low low cost way of doing that would maybe to wear a miner's light or something on your head. But what would be better is having low level lighting. So you're not straining your eyes. You can clearly see, especially when we start wrapping interiors of vehicles and things like that. Um, and again, just saying something is clean. I've gone to places or customers and they've said, yes, it's lovely and clean. But then we realize a wrapper's idea of clean is a bit higher than possibly your customer's idea of clean. So um, we just got to take that into consideration as well. And if you can't get that kind of a setup for yourself, maybe working and finding somebody who you can sort of buddy up with who might be able to rent space from or you yeah. know swap services, whatever it might be. I'm a bit reluctant to share with possibly a vehicle valitor. We're very paranoid about silicon or wax contamination. So if they're handling silicons, picking up tools, we're sharing things, that's mm -hmm. a bit of an issue. So. Uh, and again, I don't want footfall. I don't want someone opening doors or bringing the shutter up halfway through a vehicle wrap. So, and again, the top wrap companies in the country, they will have dedicated bays. 
they will be painted white. They will be a dust-free environment. They may even have air being drawn away from the vehicle, taking dust out of the air, uh, that type of thing. Just so, make it um, as easy as possible. Yeah, and again, if you're doing one wrap every two years, you wouldn't invest tens of thousands of pounds in a workshop, but um, yeah. Okay, so that's number one. Just checking that you've got the right facilities to be able to introduce wrapping. Number two that we've gone for is training. Um, obviously, here at, at the Roland Academy with James, we do we do a vehicle wrap training course. It's a two day course. Uh, it's kind of a, a bit more of a introductory slash maybe a little bit. Yeah, so people are already in the graphics industry and they want to add another string to their bow. Um, we do back that up with one-on-one -on -one training from myself, possibly at your location. So we can offer that progression in your uh, learning. Um, but we do advise coming on a generic course initially. If you're interested in the market, we're one of the only wrap courses which will actually give you that insight to business as well and how to sell your vehicle wrap. Um, and we also go, we mentioned your premises, but on the wrap course, we'd go into far more detail and specifying exactly what's needed for your workshop. Again, when I started wrapping 20 years ago, I couldn't pick up the phone to a manufacturer and book myself on a course. So 20 years ago, we had to learn by making mistakes. It was very costly. Um, and like I say, with other graphics disciplines, if we're making t-shirt, we make a mistake, it's cost us five pounds and we it's learn and we move thing, forward. Yeah. With a vehicle wrap, it could cost us a thousand pounds. So we've set the price point of the wrap course um, to encourage you to invest in your training. One silly mistake in wrapping would cost five times the price of a wrap course. So, uh, And it just makes sure that when you are leaving the course and continuing your practicing, you're using the right methods. If you watch a video that's incorrect, mm -hmm. you're actually going to be reinforcing bad technique, which um, obviously you don't want to do. Yeah, you can only learn so much by watching, watching YouTube videos and uh, getting hands-on and having somebody to... Uh, big part of it's just having somebody to ask the questions to somebody who's been there and somebody who's done that and can can really sort of help you to uh quickly and smoothly get through the, that that learning progression which is a big part of it so we offer training here uh, there are other sort of methods and things you can get tra for training but as you said it getting that strong foundation so that you've got the the yeah the foundation to move forward with your business and also well. don't be worried that you haven't done any vehicle wrapping and you're coming on a course yes we have people that experience coming to learn tips Today, we've had a course. We've had two people that have never touched vinyl before. They came very naive, not really understanding wrapping at all, and they've left with that sort of courage and sort of confidence, at least, to, to start tackling work and uh, the confidence to sort of progress their learning. Uh, a big bit of feedback that we often get from the course is that it, obviously, it doesn't just help with their wrapping skills, but also just their, their application and, uh, and training skills. Oh, sorry, I just have to close the door there a minute. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, if you learn about vehicle wrapping, um, then it's going to really help with just your general application, your general signage, your understanding of the materials and the processes involved. So it's not just to do with wrapping, but pretty much anything to do with uh, with application as well. So uh, technical hitch with somebody walking <laughs> in the room there. Um, so getting training is, is a really key, key factor. I wish I'd have had it 20 years ago and, I, and I'm sure my boss did 20 years ago because obviously I was using his film yeah. <laughs> and making mistakes. Um, again, the problem with learning on the job I tend to find is that you make a mistake, um, a customer's received poor quality work, um, you're going to lose client confidence. They could then lose confidence in the, your signage ability or whatever else is you're doing. So I think from day one, it's important that the work you're doing is done to a high standard and that will generate more work. So yeah. Perfect. So number two is training. Number three that we've gone for uh, is is to do with tooling. So checking that you've got the right tools to be able to do the do the work again. Yeah, and again, we haven't got any specific partnerships. We're not biased to any manufacturers. We just make you aware of all the tools on the market. Again, we get a lot of people who buy all the gear but don't really have any idea. So we're just sort of encouraging you to that the entry point for equipment is fairly low in wrapping. You're going to need a heat gun. You're going to need a laser thermometer. You're going to need different types of squeegee, scalpels, um, basic cutting tapes, masking tapes, double-sided tapes. We're not talking thousands of pounds. I would then say experiment with tools. I would love to tell you which I use, but they're personal to me. I think you should try using the tools you like um, and just try them out. Um, again, it's, it's amazing today just how many tools are on the market you know just to name a few you've got sign making tools sign gear yellow tools hundreds from all around the world some are even invented by installers um 
magnets, you know, all these new things constantly coming out onto the market, different wrap gloves coming onto the market every few weeks. It's a bit of a minefield, so we do give you the lowdown on equipment and tools, um, and we will put you in contact with the the, uh, the leading suppliers of wrap tools. Yeah, most people do tend to find, you know, they've got one pouch that they've got for holding their kit that they particularly like, or some people like a different type of yeah, or, and know, scalpels so. are quite, you know, personal. All we say is general rules. I'm not that snobby about tools. I'm just going to say that your blade's got to be 33 degrees or less. There's three main manufacturers, Swan Norton, Alpha, NT knives. Um, there's lots of different types. And I, I believe in just possibly buying all three. You'll always use them and then just see which you get the best results. Again, there weren't so many knives when I was learning. So I've got used to a particular knife, the weight of it, the balance of it. So I would be reluctant to switch. But I think someone new to the market, you've got far more choice now. And they do make life easier. You might get a certain type of safety cutter. It might be 30, 40 pounds. Mm -hmm. But it's something you're going to use every day. And if it stops you making a 50 pound mistake, then it's a good investment. So, yeah. So, yeah, no. Again, we've got some heat guns in the other room. We tend to buy all different types. We've got a 150 pounds heat gun. We've got a 13 pounds heat gun. Again, my expensive equipment might stay in my workshop. When I'm doing on-site work, I might take a less expensive heat gun. So I think it's good to have different types. Um, you can't do wall wrapping with one type of squeegee. So I'm going to use a more rigid one, a flexible one, a felt one, ones with different edges. Um, some installers um, actually make their own edges and supply them to other installers. Um, so it's quite a, a nice market. I see a lot of installers now, myself included. You know, we've got everything in a nice, neat, pelly suitcase. You know, so all our equipment's kept clean. Um, there's lots of different new tools coming out literally every week. Okay, so bit, I guess bottom line, if you're getting into it, there's not that much that you need to get going. You know, as James said, a couple of knives, squeegees, gloves, some tapes, heat gun, and you, you, you've pretty much got Yeah, and again, a lot of our notes, we're trying to be generic here, but we do appreciate there's different types of wrapping. I made different by, by different tools if I'm applying printed wraps. Probably there's more tools for that color change market because we're after that higher level of finish and detailing. So plenty of tools if you want to be um, color changing cars. Perfect. So next up, uh, obviously a key part to introducing something, anything into your business is researching the market and or competition as well. Yeah, we're going to quite a big market. Again, it's evolved a huge amount. 20 years ago, we didn't have social media. I couldn't look at other companies. So. Now you can fairly sit on your sofa at home and you can research local businesses. You can identify which markets are maybe saturated in your local area. Again, trends can be geographical. So trends in London may be different from Yorkshire or Scotland. Um, you may find there's lots of companies color changing cars locally to you, but no one owns a digital printer. So that would be a market that's more open. Mm -hmm. um, I think as well, if you're going to get into vehicle wrapping, it's healthy to understand the market, what people are charging. Um, I think a naive approach is to say, oh, let's do wraps for free, let's get practicing. Um, it's very hard then to turn around to a customer and say, oh, I'm doubling the amount I'm charging you now because I now know what I'm doing. I think it's much healthier to get training, decide your market value, take longer to wrap a car, but charge mm -hmm. the correct amount. As you start wrapping cars quicker, your profit margin will increase. Um, but I think it's very important to do research again, linked into premises, find out what your overheads are, try and factor in what you're going to be charging for a car, finding out um, and also find alternatives. So if I'm doing market research and I'm going to color change cars using vinyl, I think it's healthy to understand what spray shops are charging in your local area to paint a car. Um, you'd maybe want to go to a more backstreet garage of a low cost respray and then maybe approach a, a prestige car um, respray companies so you're sort of finding out what budget more agricultural resprays would cost and then a very high-end respray what gloss what matte what matte metallics um, and what they cost what problems do paint shops face that you could solve if a customer wrapped their car instead uh, we're mostly aware that if we spray a car in mother of pearl if someone has an accident, they'd have to respray the whole vehicle. With wrap, we could just replace that one panel. Um, you'll be alarmed at how much costs increase when we're talking about um, flip colors and uh, matte metallics. They could be 7,000 pounds for a respray. So why would I turn around to a customer and say, I can do that for 1,500 pounds? It's healthy to know price point of other markets so we can establish an alternative for the customer and what we would charge to do that work. 
Brilliant. And um, other things to do with the market, it's not just, uh, you know, the competition or, or what's happening with you, but also, you know, trends, what's happening uh, in terms of what's popular, what materials are popular, yeah. uh, what, what are people looking to looking to get at the moment? Uh, yeah, because it's quite a fast paced thing now. I've had clients who have wrapped cars every six months. They want winter colours, they want summer colours. Um, again, in London now, lots of cars have been done matte black and customers tend to want what they haven't seen. They want a standalone colour. Um, I try and keep in contact with my suppliers. If a supplier says, look, we've just brought this brand new film out, I could use my social media to contact customers to let them know that there is this new colour and they could be the first in the country to have it or they could be the first in their county to have that new colour. Um, and we're sort of setting trends in wrapping ahead of what motor manufacturers are doing. I don't know if anyone noticed the last few years, the high contrast look, we call it the black, the white cars. We rappers were doing that to cars and then the automotive industry seemed to catch up with that. And now you're seeing lots of white cars with black roofs oh, yeah. and black trims. And you're seeing lots of cars with that de-chroming look. Um, and that's coming into the market now. So I just generally think it takes motor manufacturers a long time to make changes, whereas rappers can grab some vinyl and put it on a car and create a trend. Yeah. Um, so again, that's just part of marketing research, finding out what people are doing, looking at blogs, following webinars like this. And hopefully throughout the next year, we're going to try and push the envelope of wrapping. We're going to try and show you things that people haven't done before um, and try and create some excitement and buzz in the market, which hopefully will spread. I'm sure we will. <laughs> All right, so uh, number five on our list, uh, we've gone for, uh, we've written sort of protect yourself, basically. So uh, within, when you're working on other people's property, cars, when you're uh, introducing something new into your business, there, there's a lot of common pitfalls that people can fall into. Uh, and it's good to sort of protect your business and yourself by having things, certain forms that you might get, waivers, that kind of stuff. For, yeah. For and again, when people come on the course, they think it's all just about putting wrap on and it's cool. and it's, But we've got to think about that legality. We've got to think about processing customers. We've got to think about customer service. So one of the things we cover on the course would be maybe a contact form. I tend to find in smaller sign shops, one-man bands especially, they will tend to pick up the phone. Customer says, I want a vehicle wrap. And they just say, what vehicle have you got? Oh, that's roughly this price. And that's what I want to try and pull back from. Mm. I'm going to try and ask more questions than that, a lot more questions. Um, and again, this is just me learning over 20 years. I've made every mistake possible. And again, it's costly. So we aim on the course to stop you making those same mistakes. So I am want to know the existing color of the vehicle. It's a lot more difficult to wrap a red car matte black than it is a gloss black car matte black, you know? So that may affect my pricing. Where does my client want me to apply the wrap? I'm going to charge less per vehicle to wrap 20 vehicles than just a one-off vehicle. So have you asked quantity? Um, have we broached the subject of artwork, which we'll talk about later? Um, when is the lead time on the vehicle? You won't want to say, yes, we can do that work. And then they phone back the next day and say, yes, you've got the job. We're delivering it tomorrow because you didn't tell them what the lead times are. Um, also, what if we remove a wrap and we have issues with lacquer damage or something like that due to possibly someone applying a lacquer incorrectly? So it'd be better to have the customer sign off terms and conditions um, to protect yourself against a third party um, doing inferior work, you know, and it's going to affect your business. So I'd want you to educate the customer as to what they're letting themselves in for and um and just make sure you're comfortable with that setup. So I also do forms about delivering vehicles. We'll go through all this on the course, but I don't want a muddy van turning up and then spend a day cleaning it before I even start putting vinyl on. I can't then add an additional charge for a very dirty vehicle turning up if I didn't inform the customer that they may incur an extra charge. So, And we want paper trail. If I just pick up the phone, warn my customer about all these points, they can deny everything. So yeah. I'd like a paper trail, emails, um, visual signed off, just to make sure color proofs, wet proofs, you know, to make sure that colors are matching and the customer's comfortable with that. So yeah, lots of different ways that, as you said, over years of experience, luckily James has made all these mistakes. So we, so yeah, we I don't, don't want to scare mistakes. you. <laughs> so, so we don't have to, but um, yeah. It's, it's so better to be aware of the pitfalls and protect yourself rather than just go into it blind. And again, it's what we're offering that other rap courses don't. We're just going to that level of detail with you and giving you the confidence to, to literally start a rap business the next day. All right, so next up we've gone for um, design, which 
Uh, obviously, if you if you're if you're working in digital print, not so much if you're work well. If you are working with color change as well, they might want you know um, stripes or swooshes or whatever. But uh, mainly, for probably when we're talking about digital prints, uh, and something that James has come up with, which is uh, the three second rules. So if you want to explain that, yeah, because we put the word design, but it's a huge word design. It covers yeah. many aspects. We're just gonna give a few little, as we say, tips regarding design. So my first tip when it comes to general layout is what I call the three second rule. Remembering that a vehicle is mobile, remembering that we see it drive past us on the motorway. It's not a leaflet we can sit here and read and study or a website. It's three dimensional, it's moving. So I have my little system, my partner gets a bit annoyed with this because when I'm sitting designing at home, I may print something off, hold it up, Without saying anything, I'll pop the visual back down again and say, who was that company? How would you contact them? If yeah. I get a blank look, I'll redesign it. Perfect. So it's just, um, and it's also what I call, um, you know, visual weight, making sure that the customer sees the logo first, making sure they see the contact second, making they see bullet points third. So we're using visual weight, um, color balance, just to guide the customer. I tend to find that um, design is very subconscious. If there's too much information, i.e. it takes you 30 seconds to read something, your brain will make a split second decision not to bother reading it at all. I see, I'm just explaining this in more detail because it's one of my pet hates to see a vehicle wrap, <laughs> drive past it and not really have an understanding of what they were trying to visually communicate to me. Yeah. Maybe I'm a bit biased because no, I'm I always see. looking at them and yeah, noticing them. But <laughs> it's, it's, yeah, it's true, especially when you're if you're working digital printing, you're working more in the sort of signage marketing. They are trying to get some important cost, then it's got yeah. to come across. But and if you are going to outsource design, I wouldn't just blindly go to the nearest freelance graphic designer. I'm going to try and talk to someone who has knowledge of designing vehicle graphics, understands bleed, overlap. Um, not again, just to worry you, but certainly if we put joins in wrong places on our digital print, no matter how good your installer is, no matter how good the vinyl is, it's likely to fail. So we go through where to put joins, where not to put joins. Obviously, we've got lovely Versa works to work with, um, which is a great rip for artworking a vehicle wrap within the rip. Mm. Um, my other big point is if you're new to vehicle wrapping or want to get into it, I would start by learning Adobe design software. So I'm not possibly going to design a vehicle wrap in Sign Lab. Flip. Although you can, I'm not going to say you can't, of course, but Typically, a design agency isn't going to send you a sign lab file and say, can you print this vehicle wrap? They won't send you a Coral Draw yeah. file. They will send you an Adobe AI file, an Adobe EPS, a PDF, um, and they might send you a multi-layered PSD document to be able to edit. Um, the other big tip, I haven't discussed this, is Joe, so I'm going off piece a bit now. Um, <laughs> I tend to discuss with customers the fact that I'm going to charge more money to graphically design something than I am to set something. Um, I will give them the option of settings. What I mean by that is I could just get a generic clip art background. I could place their logo and their telephone number. I could do it with my client. I would set it and it's done quickly and it's a lower price point. But before we go ahead with that decision, I will warn the customer that anyone could download that clip art, anyone could mimic that business. Yeah. So that is a way of me upselling graphic design. I'm saying I will spend longer to create your artwork, but you own it and it will be copyrighted to your business. Yeah. Um, okay. So that's what I'm going to encourage my customers to do. So as I said, design is a huge, um, yeah, a huge module that we could talk about. And we, yeah. we probably will look to do uh, more webinars uh, and training further down the line to talk yeah, about Yeah, I'd love to introduce a one-day design course purely on design, just on vehicle design. I'm not gonna, it's not an Illustrator Photoshop mm -hmm. course. You can go to college to learn that if you want. I'm gonna expect you to have a certain amount of knowledge in the software, but we're gonna teach you those specific tricks in laying out vehicles. I'm also explaining this to the clients because to me, a PDF of a vehicle template showing an orthographic projection is not print ready artwork. So even if a client was willing to design it themselves and supplies me, I would have a setup fee to convert that into print ready artwork. That's so at the early point of selling a vehicle wrap. of print ready artwork. <laughs> yes. And a lot of graphic designers will not understand where the overlaps are. They won't understand how much bleed to put on panels. So in the early times, again, just overlapping with paperwork, when I'm initially discussing a vehicle wrap with a client, I'm going to offer for me to do it at a fixed cost. I will let them do it, but warn them of if the panels are incorrectly artworked, what the reprint charges would be. 
Charlie. Or I will accept their artwork, but I will charge a fee to make sure it is printed correctly. So really, I'm giving them three options. And I might scare them a little bit about doing it themselves. Right. And also, and I would have like very that. clear guidelines on my website as to how to create that, or I would send them something. But what I'm not going to do is say, I won't charge you to do any artwork fees and then spend six hours on the phone telling them how to artwork a vehicle wrap, if you see what I mean. It's not just a quick signage. It's We've got to consider there could be 12 to 15 print panels on a standard vehicle. Uh, so next up on our list, number seven, we've gone for um, printed graphics or a, tr a way of standing out from the crowd. So uh, obviously there's there's color change work, standard what using films, or existing films to, to wrap a vehicle. But then if you do own a printer, you can create anything. And anything doesn't necessarily just mean you know, a, a funky text or a, a pattern. It could, there's, there's so much more, and this is what we're going to look further down in, in future webinars is, is what else is there that you can do. But you want to stand out from the, from the crowd, and you also want to be able to, if potentially if you do want to not focus on one thing, get more commercial work, get more signage written work, uh, and create things that other people can't do. Yeah, so I think you've got to work from your strengths. If you don't own printer, you're going to have to outsource printing, but there's lots of third-party companies with Rolands that will sell you uh, print. If you're a color change business, I'm seeing a lot of companies developing that now. I think the exciting thing about wrapping and what we're just on the cusp of is customers walking into a, a Ford dealership and saying, I don't want red or blue. I want Smarties all over my car. I want leaves. I want Gucci pattern um, licensing artwork, you know, and not creating a printed wrap to advertise a product, but just for fashion, just to create a just unique design on a car, out. you know. Um, and that for me is the exciting part. Also what I call mixed media. So understanding that yes, we can print a graphic. We don't have to print the whole vehicle. We can do overlays over the top of wraps. We could put chrome lettering onto a printed background. We could put a matte wrap with a gloss print. Again, when I first started wrapping, you got the choice of any laminate you wanted as long as it was gloss. <laughs> but now we can provide a satin wrap with a digital print. We can now also provide, not many are aware of who it is, I'll let you find out who the manufacturer is, but we can get a, a metallic laminate as well. So we can put a metallic lamb onto a digital print. That's for me getting quite interesting now. Yeah, um, and with the launch of our, our new machine as well, so uh, the VG2, the truth is VG2, uh, outgassing times. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> outgassing times are getting shorter, so it's got a much shorter outgassing time for your vehicle weapon, so you can- Yeah, we're hearing figures of four, six hours, which for me is just amazing, because there's other technologies, but they've increased their outgassing time since they've launched, launched equipment. We've decreased um, outgassing time, so there's very negligible differences between them now. Now, I had to, manage my print process to allow for that but if those times reduce our time around times uh reduce so uh, yeah. same day turnaround uh yeah. and the same with you know the introduction of again say for example with the vg2 we've got um a new orange ink so being able to hit more colors so more of these corporate work where they're trying to hit certain logos or they want extra vibrant colors um then you we can hit a lot yeah, more again those punchy that. oranges those lime greens those subtle grays um, that's what's slowly improving. Again, going back in time, we used to be happy if it looked good from 20 mile, 20 meters away going, you know, 200 mile an hour. But now the customer expectation of print has really, you know, exceeded. People won't accept banding. They don't want to see dot patterns in their print. Um, so we've sort of got to keep up with uh, the, the technology. Um, years ago, I couldn't rotate panels on my printer. You'd see differences now with the, the way it lays the ink. We can flip panels around. We can print solid colors that look like solid colors. So if we can hit Pantones much more accurately, um, yeah, it's really starting to move forward now. Brilliant. So that was, uh, that was number seven for printed graphics. Number eight on our top tip is practice. Practice, practice, practice. <laughs> yeah. Again, a two-day course, you're not, you know, it's Monday, it's Tuesday today, we've done a two-day wrap course. I wouldn't expect people to wrap a double-decker bus tomorrow. They've done a two-day course. Our courses are slightly different. We don't, ex we don't focus on wrapping a bonnet all day until you perfect it. We show you the technique and the game plan to wrap all bonnets. We'd expect you to put the hours in afterwards. Again, the reason we do that, today we've had a company director. He's quite openly said at the start of the course, I am never going to wrap a car. But he's come on this course to make sure that he's hiring the right staff. He's training them the right way. If he uses freelancers, he can walk up to them and say, I don't wrap cars, but I know you're doing that wrong. 
Mm. Um, yeah, he yeah. can ascertain as to when a mistake happens, why the mistake happened. And that's what we're giving him the ability to it's, do. It's a key thing we find on lots of our courses, not just the vehicle route courses, but we get people from all parts of the process coming on the training so that they can understand when something's going, going wrong. Yeah, or so we might have a something. graphic designer and he's or just come on the course it. to understand fitting. So he's a better designer, company directors, production managers. Um, Again, a lot of the reason I know I've just contradicted, I know you'd come on a rap course, but you're not going to be a master. Generally, there's a general consensus in any form of learning. If you want to be an expert in something, you've got 10,000 hours. You know, whether you want to be a, a pianist, a gymnast, you know, you've got to put the hours in. You wouldn't expect to go on a two day cookery course and then, you know, be head chef in a Michelin restaurant. You're going to have to go away, refine your art and um, get better at it. The other reason we're putting that amount of time in learning. A lot of uh, the skill of a vehicle wrapper is subconscious, I call it. It's muscle memory. When I am applying or laying vinyl, I'm not consciously thinking about what my hand's doing. If I was doing that, I'd be looking at my hand and concentrating on it. When I'm wrapping, I'm thinking two to three stages ahead. If I had to think about my hand, I wouldn't be thinking two, three stages ahead of what I'm doing. It's similar to driving a car. If you've driven a car for five years, you don't look at the gear stick. It. Well, I hope you don't anyway. And again, if you've got an automatic, you wouldn't. But you, when you first got in the car, you look at where the gears are. You crunch a few. You learn. Now you know where that third gear is. You can look at the road. You can concentrate on another element. Um, so we give you that practice time. Um, you leave practicing the right way. So at least your muscle memory will be correct. You'll use the correct angles. You'll have the correct method. And also we're teaching people to fit any type of vinyl. We're not focusing on one manufacturer's film, which you do get on manufacturer-based courses. So we are saying to you, this is how you would fit that film. This is how you would fit this film and how to mix the skills and use them for whatever you've been asked to do. It's one of the most common questions that, that I receive about vehicle wrapping training is, if I come on your course, can I then wrap my car, wrap a car, wrap a thing? Obviously, every car is different. They might practice and practice on one type, but then that's all one type of curvature. Then they're going to move to another type of curvature on a different one, or it's going to have different trim. So practice, you have to you have to put the hours into it. And also, I've got nothing against manufacturer courses. They're really well run. They're great. But I'm just saying we're offering that broad spectrum. Once you go away and practice for a few months, yes, I would advise you to go if you want to really focus on a manufacturer's film i would say go on their course they will teach you the nuts and bolts of using that film but we're going to cover a far more broader spectrum about the industry of vehicle wrapping so um yeah they work hand in hand with each other brilliant so now we're up to number nine uh, and that's learning to say no <laughs> and i think this just applies to a whole world of stuff where people <laughs> just tend to take on too much especially in the signage industry uh, or in the sign and graphics industry, you know, somebody comes in and says, can you do whatever it is? If they can't do it, they'll say yes and figure out how to do it. But uh, I think with wrapping as well, you need to learn where your limits are and set those uh, realistic expectations for your customers and for yourself so you don't end up shooting yourself in the foot. Yeah, I think there's a fine line between confidence and cockiness. So uh, it's just understanding your own ability, but also being able to sell to your customers. So if I'm confident to do bonnet wraps, I'm going to push bonnet wraps. Um, if there's certain types of vans that scare me, yes, I would pull back from those until the knowledge is there. Bearing in mind there are freelancers like myself. So if you wanted to take on work, mm. you could always phone a friend if you're not confident. And, and, and uh, But I think it's important. Again, a lot of customers might come in and say, oh, someone said they would wrap my double-decker bus in chrome vinyl for £400. I wouldn't try and match that price just because a customer's telling you that's what they can get it done for. Um, I would stick to my guns. I would work out what it costs me to do it. Because at the end of the day, um, if you are a sign shop that offers lots of different products, if you can make X amount per hour putting polymeric print onto a piece of dye bond and you're making 30, 40, 50 pounds an hour, why would you want to wrap a car for 20 pounds an hour? So I think it's very important. You're realistic about the time it will take. Yeah. Um, and again, I normally have this thing of thirds. Um, people think that wrapping a car, it's going to be cleaning for half an hour wrap it for two days and trim it in 20 minutes it's not it's roughly third you're going to spend you know eight hours possibly cleaning a vehicle and eight hours wrapping it and eight hours trimming it if it's a color change um you're going to be stripping the car down while you're cleaning it you know it's the actual application of vinyl is only a third of the job i spend as long trimming and finishing and as long cleaning as possible as well so if a customer wants me to put you know a round peg in a square hole i'm, I'm going to pull back from that and i'm going to make them aware um, also, there is 
no one way to wrap a car. I tend to find all cars are different. So if someone says they've got a BMW, well, is it a brand new BMW? Is it a 10 year old BMW? Um, and then what's my customer like? You know, does the customer want cheap and cheerful? Does the customer want highest standard possible? Um, if they want you to do a show car and they put you in a badly lit workshop that's clean, you know, dirty, badly lit, even if you're the best rapper in the world, you're not going to achieve that high standard. So I don't mind doing that as long as I've explained it to the customer and they're comfortable with that. But otherwise, like we said, just say no. And the final one is continuing to learn and develop. We mentioned that, you know, setting a foundation at the beginning of your process, learning to use the right um, processes at the beginning so that you get the best muscle memory, you're learning to do everything properly moving forward. But you, this happens again with most, th most things, you hit a certain point and you just sort of plateau. And if you want to move up to that next stage, uh, and there are people who are, you know, trainers who, who, are, who are learning about everything in the industry that's developing and continually developing. So uh, coming back on training or looking at what else there is available, maybe going to trade shows and talking to people, uh, again, doing more research down the line. Uh, what I'm just going to quickly do is pop up on the screen um, a link to um, our courses if you are interested. Um, hopefully that will pop up there for you guys. Let's get that going. There we go. So uh, that should pop up a little link on your screens where you can uh, get access to our training. If it hasn't, just let me know uh, to check in on the screen there. Um, but as I said, there are other training as well. And there's other ways of developing, but just continue to learn and push yourself a bit more so that you uh, can grow continuously. And not yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm still learning because it's not a static industry. You know, they've just brought out the VG2. So to me, that's interesting. What other colors can I create? Um, new vinyls come out, you know, there's new adhesives on the market. Um, there's new um, colors, new finishes, three dimensional finishes, textures. So there's always something to learn, always progressing. Um, again, you learn wrapping, but then you get better at dealing with customers, you know, and for me, that's the thing that's always changing, you know, and learning and improving at sales or improving at graphic design, new software coming out. Um, plus, as I said, we're going to try and push the envelope of um, vehicle wrapping. We're going to try and introduce new ideas, um, uh, new looks to cars, new trends in colours. Um, so again, that's why I'm passionate about the industry. I love vehicle wrapping. Um, it's why I still don't sit behind a desk letting other people do the work. I like getting hands on. I like talking to end users. I like to. I like seeing a. Uh, someone who's come on a rap course having never wrapped a car and you know they're doing really well we've had people on courses because we've been running so long um we've recently um i don't know if anyone's at sign uk but chris hooper i believe won sort of best installer in a competition and he was on a rap course with us um 10 12 years ago so um again he came he always he installed vinyls he learned everything we've um, learned on rap courses he's progressed over the last decade and now he's at one of the best installers in the country by far so um that's really good for me to see as well and it's um lovely to see progression in customers and then coming back for learning because the course has run so long and we've constantly developed the course we've had someone come on the course 10 years ago but it's come back on the course because we've added more about business and running your business more efficiently um possibly not wrapping cars any better but making 10 percent more profit margin just from efficiency and not wasting time and um yeah just making a bit more profit on the same work so it looks like that uh, that link didn't work. So I'm just trying to just trying to uh, ping it back up a sec. So let's try that again. Uh, I have just popped it into the into the chat box there. Um, so that's a quick overview of our top ten. As we said, that we could have carried on for forever <laughs> talking yeah. about. Well, for one, going into we could have done a full webinar on any one of those top ten tips. Uh, but also, there's there's loads of others. Uh, so as we said, the best way to do it is come and ask the questions yourself if you're if you're looking to get into into vehicle wrapping. But um, if any of you have got any questions now, uh, we'll just quickly jump over and try and answer those. Um, but oh, also, one other point I wanted to mention: we keep saying vehicle wrapping, vehicle wrapping, vehicle wrapping. Think of it as wrapping. We've got a piano out here that's wrapped. Generally, I say it's too wordy for us to put on the course manual. Um, wrapping non-porous surfaces in you know pvc film with that with a high glue density you know it's a bit wordy for the front of a manual but you don't have to focus we've got wrapped fridges here we've got snowboards we've got laptops crash helmets vending machines um it is wrapping it's not vehicle wrapping we do teach you that towards the end of the course people have specialist requirements things and objects they want to wrap we've had customers come on this course just because they want to wrap vending machines for their own business and do it internally 
Um, so there's lots of different types of wrapping. Just Google it, have a look on the internet, create your own market, your own niche. Um, and again, we've got the kit and the training to help you uh, achieve your goals. So yeah. It's a good point. If you stand still in this building long enough, then you get wrapped. <laughs> Everything's wrapped. But uh, I've just popped up a quick survey. So I don't know if you've got your eyes could just quickly uh, answer those questions. That'd be great. Uh, and if any of you have got any questions, please feel free to answer them away. We can probably see how long we've been going. Yeah, we've probably got five or so minutes if you if you do want us to answer any quick, quick, quick questions. Um, so we'll hang on for a couple of minutes. But if not, thank you for joining us and listening. Uh, it's been great to have you here. And please join us. In the future, keep an eye out for our webinars uh, on the website. Um, and thanks to James for, for joining us My as well. My pleasure. So let's just see if we've got any questions. Hopefully we haven't, we hopefully we've answered them all and everyone's That's completely right, clued up now. Too good. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it looks like that link's finally popped up at the top there. Um, do you recommend an adhesive under the vinyl for a boat? Um, yeah, it is. People are sort of confused by boats sometimes. Again, we'll show you more <laughs> photos. I've done several boat wraps all over Europe, some over the world. Um, Vinyls, generally, we're saying if it's an automotive film, if it's a cast vinyl, if it's a solvent acrylic adhesive, we're comfortable to use it for boats. There are some manufacturers who are reluctant to push it for boat wrapping. Um, as far as I'm aware, having done factory tours, having spoken to people at vinyl manufacturers about R&D, um, nearly all automotive wrap films would work on a boat under the water. We don't tend to go over anti-foul. We go as far as the water line slightly below. Um, so yes, if vinyls had ingress of moisture, round fuel caps would all fail on car wraps. You know, If you're sealing the edge properly, petrol would break the glue down much faster than seawater, and it doesn't. So. Oh, believe me, I've got boats that are still in the water. They're five years in the water. They're still looking good. Um, so boat wrapping is a huge market around the world. Um, again, it can update a boat. It can replace gel coat um, rather than, you know, if you've got in imperfections in the keel. Um, so, yes, um, the only thing I will say is it catches some people out regarding overlaps. If we wrap a van... We're starting at the back of the van and working forward so the overlaps are protected. If we're wrapping horizontally on a vehicle, we'll put, apply the lower panels and then tile them upwards as if we're sort of tiles on a roof so they're overlapping and rainwater can run down. Boats catch people out because years ago, people used to do it in drops and it looks a bit naff with all these 20 mil overlaps all the yeah. way down a boat. So the modern way to wrap a boat is horizontally. We just make sure it's the exception to the rule so we apply the top panel first and then the lower panels because as the boat moves through the water the water comes up so we want to protect those edges also there are specific edge sealers for boats so if we're worried about an overlap worried about an edge we would mask the edge and apply an edge sealer it's a clear sort of lacquer and it would seal that edge and stop moisture ingress or more aggressive abrasion on the edge of that film i right, hope that answered your question there um <laughs> one more question um what is your preference for the vinyl you work with uh as as us as roland we don't have a preference yeah. because there's so many manufacturers i have got an answer for that it is a bit political though as you <laughs> might expect so my generic answer is i am happy to fit any vinyl my customer wants it's just my professionalism that will explain the pitfalls of using that particular film possibly so if I think they've selected a vinyl which takes longer to fit, it's my duty to sort of say to a customer, yes, you save some money on vinyl, but it may take me X amount of time to install it. I just need to look at data sheets. I need to be aware of what the manufacturer's warranty is, the UV durability of the film. So if it's facing the sun or I can advise a customer as to, all oh, right, yes, you've saved some money. I'm not going to be anti eBay, but I'm very reluctant to, to, to use a film where I don't know where it's come from. So eBay may not have a data sheet for that film. If a customer buys their own film and hands it to me, I'm reluctant to fit it to their vehicle. If there's any issues, they'll come back to me to redress that. And I didn't supply the film, so I'm reluctant to. And generally, I have my preferences. Um, 
But typically, if I said to you, oh, this is my favorite film and it's very expensive, if a customer wants to do an economical vehicle wrap, then their that's favorite not, film isn't going to be the yeah. most expensive, you see. If they want high gloss, I'm going to select a film which has those properties. So hand on heart, honestly, I don't use any one vinyl manufacturer. I will pick the, if sort of a customer asks me, I will have my preference. But then again, if I put vinyl swatches in front of them and there is not a color match, and they say, this company has got an exact match for our corporate color. I've got to use that vinyl. It's just my job to say, it takes me longer to fit, or it only comes yeah. this wide. And it's, or... it's part of your, your, your training development is to experience, exper experience. <laughs> experiment with different, different films for yourself. One rapper might prefer one film over another, but they're both equally you know, capable rappers. Yeah, and it's also, I love this rap course because I don't have to get into bed with any manufacturers, you know, I don't have to push a particular film. I'm trying to be even-handed. My way I explain it to end users on the rap course is, don't take my word for it. Don't take any salesman's word for it. Mm -hmm. Get a sample of film, work with it, test it. My way of doing things is testing. I would not put any brand new vinyl that's come onto the market on a customer's vehicle without first testing it on my vehicle. I'm gonna find the limitations of that film, the pros, the cons, you know, how glossy is it? What's the fitability of that film? Um, is there airflow, is it non-airflow, air escape, whatever you wanna call it? Um, you know, does my customer want quick turnaround? You know, if they want it matte, there's only a certain amount of manufacturers that supply a, a matte digital system. So yeah. hand on heart, I'm not gonna get political, but you know, there's no one best film in the world. I have my favorites. Um, come on the rap course and find out what they are. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we've got time for one more quick one. Um, can you buff or polish light scuffs on vinyl? Yes, no. There's no clear <laughs> answers in wrapping. So again, what I advise customers would not machine polish vinyl. Machine polishing creates a lot of friction. Friction is heat. Heat can damage film. So we're not going to machine polish vinyl. However, hand polishing, myrrh, teacup, yes. Also, what a lot of people don't realize is generally PVC has a memory. That also means that marking can be removed with heat. So if you have a matte black, which even just running the back of your nail down, it will make it look slightly shiny. Mm. If I put about 80 degrees Celsius on that film, that mark will drop out. Again, testing, testing, testing. You will find that some matte blacks marks drop out of films better than others, but generally, Another massive area of wrapping that has improved over the last few years is aftercare, which we do cover on the course towards the end. So we would talk about hydrophobic coatings. Uh, we can get glossifiers. We can get sealants for matte films. Years ago, if I wrapped someone's car matte white, you know, if they park their tree under a tree under a car, if they park their car under a tree, you'd get sap marks. You'd get contamination from brake dust because there's quite an open pore to a matte film PVC. If we put a sealant on it, it can't get into the film. And it's a coating we could apply every few months or when we wash our car. We can put hydrophobic coatings on matte black. So when it rains, the water beads off. If water dries on your car, it's gonna leave calcium deposits. It's gonna leave salt in the winter. So if we stop the water sticking, we can stop the dirt. So I would maybe sell a customer an aftercare package um, something to use on their car, something to hand their vehicle valitor. And again, we do warn customers, I have in the past put stickers on cars, little signs on their rear view mirror to say, this is the aftercare of your vehicle. Years ago, we did have, I had a valitor phone me and say, I've just machine polished this matte black car and it's gone shiny. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> not what I can say to that. It's a pretty obvious that would have happened. So um, now I just make sure they're aware of aftercare. Typically, you can take car wraps in car washes but some car washes are very abrasive. Modern ARC, sort of ARC franchise car washes, they use very anti-marking brushes and things like that. But typically I say to customers, hand wash with warm soapy water. Try not to mark your car in the first place. Again, at the point of sale, um, if I wrap your car in carbon fiber, it's not real carbon fiber, it's still PVC. If someone leans on your car and zip scratch it, it can mark it. Again, a certain amount of healing can be done. Again, the benefit of a wrap that it is only PVC. If something's damaged, we can just replace that panel. Certain car paint finishes, you'd have to respray your whole car if it had the smallest mark on the paint. Also, you can ceramic coat vinyls as well. So we can pro provide a protective layer. You can PPF over vinyl, so paint protection films. 
those paint protection films are now coming gloss, satin, matte, so we can apply paint protection to matte finish wraps as well as it's, it's, gloss. It's never a simple question. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Ask it. yeah. All right. Well, that's all we've got time for today. So uh, if you do have any more questions, again, we'll just leave the chat box open for a couple of minutes. So uh, if, you, if, you, if you ask any of your questions, um, uh, we'll answer those and email you back uh, tomorrow or the next day. But uh, thanks for joining us again. Thanks, James, for joining us. No Hope problem. you found it useful. You. If you have any feedback, let